Hey guys, it's Teppo here with another weekly episode. I'm so pumped to be back on track, putting out videos for you guys to enjoy on the channel. If you guys didn't hear, I've been traveling for six weeks around the world shooting weddings. I talked about that a little bit more in the update video. But if you guys haven't seen that, go check that out and also enjoy some of our summer cottage fun. I loved hearing all the positive comments from you guys about just how nice it is to see Finnish culture and just to see what it's like to live here in Finland. So I'll make sure to keep doing that in the videos because I would really like to show you what my life is like here in Finland. But yeah, like I said, there's been a little bit of radio silence in the last six weeks because, well, first I was in Canada for two weeks, then I was in the US for two weeks, and then I was in Italy for two weeks shooting weddings. It was pretty hectic and a little bit challenging to keep up with the weekly videos. So sorry about that, but we're now back on track. But like I said, something I do on top of YouTube is shooting weddings. I actually first started in photography and filmmaking by doing weddings. Uh, back in 2009, when I first bought my first DSLR, I started shooting weddings because, well, Maddie and I were both like, well, we're putting a lot of money into gear and we need to get money back out, so why not shoot weddings? Because everyone's always getting married. And so we started from there. We started making the, the wedding trailers and also shooting photos. And, and here in Finland, I feel like the wedding trailers that we were creating were kind of like the first ones here. So in some ways, we were kind of paving the way for, for wedding films. And so in the last episode, I asked you guys, uh, would you guys be keen on learning more about wedding films or wedding photography? And everyone was like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. And uh, I was super stoked about that because I've learned so much about wedding photography and wedding filmmaking in the last nine years. So I would love to share my my wisdom and my expertise and the do's and don'ts because, well, everyone's got to start somewhere. And I would really say that weddings is a great place to start when it comes to making some money off photography or filmmaking, but as well for learning. Uh, for myself, I've learned so much through weddings when it comes to finding the right light, posing couples, directing the day, um, how to just be really quick, you know, this, this kind of run and gun style shooting where you gotta focus fast, you gotta adjust the settings fast, and you gotta get the shot because, well, in weddings, you don't have the luxury of being like, hey, can you redo the kiss? Or, hey, can we redo this? Because a lot of times it's just very quick, it's a one-time thing, it's natural, it's real, so you can't just redo a really natural or real response. So weddings is a great place to learn. I, I think of it as like a training ground for filmmaking and photography. But before we get into that, guys, do you notice that the backdrop, it's new. This is my new office. I have been slaving away for the last few weeks working on this. It's still not quite done. I'm still trying to figure out how to decorate it, but this back wall right here, it used to be a really ugly flower print wall and I just couldn't film against it. So I used to film in that corner over there with the white walls, you guys remember that from the winter time. But I really wanted to just make my own office space. So I painted this wall three times. Yes, three times. The first time it looked absolutely terrible. Second time looked better. Third time looks good. I'm proud of myself. I'm not the biggest handyman. So something like painting can actually feel quite overwhelming. If anyone you is watching and you guys are handymen, you like painting or something, next time you are more than welcome to come paint my wall because it's a pain in the butt. And then I had a friend, I'll show you in a bit some footage, I had a friend create my own custom table, shelf, and it looks good. My friend Henry Latsasade, he's a really good uh, just carpenter and just handyman, like he can do whatever you want, he'll create it. and. Um, yeah, if you guys are very interested in a table like that, you can order one from him because he'd love that. It might be a little bit challenging shipping it from Finland, I don't know, we'll figure that out. But So yeah, I'm super pumped to have this office, uh, just to have my own space to create, to film, and uh, yeah, I think it's a lot better than the white backdrop. What do you guys think? <laughs> On to wedding filmmaking. First things first, before you can even start wedding filmmaking or wedding photography, you need gear. And I'm not the biggest gear head, I don't always talk about gear, but obviously I think it's a great place to start with what kind of gear I am using. So for wedding films, you'd be pretty surprised that all that I use for most of the day is this. Yep, it's the GH5. Literally, I just use the GH5 and the Sigma 35 1.4 with a Metabones adapter all day long. Now you guys are wondering, how in the world do I survive with this? Where's the tripod? Where's the monopod? I shoot the whole wedding handheld. Yeah, it's revolutionized filming weddings for me because I used to film with the Canons 
uh, the 5D Mark III, and we all know Canon, it looks great, but the older versions didn't have any stabilizers yet. So with the 5D Mark III, when you're filming, you could see the micro shake always in the footage, and that just didn't look appealing. But with the GH5, you have the built-in image stabilizer, and I'm brave enough to say that this image stabilizer in the GH5 is so good that I'm able to even do some walking shots as if it looks like a glide cam, and I'll show you right now. But yeah, ever since I got the GH5, uh, more and more I've got comfortable with the image stabilizer and kind of pushed the boundaries of how much I can film just handheld. And I used to have a monopod and tripod, and then at one point I was like, I don't even need a monopod anymore. I used to use it for weddings with the 5D Mark III, but now, just film handheld. So if you're really looking forward to this kind of run and gun wedding filmmaking, I would definitely suggest to check out the link below for the GH5. It's going for a really great price. But yeah, uh, for me, my philosophy about wedding filmmaking is the less gear, the better. And the reason why is that you're shooting an audience of people who are not used to being in front of a camera. So when you all of a sudden have this huge rig there or some huge gimbal set up, the people feel quite overwhelmed and I don't think they can just relax in front of you. Whereas with this, I literally can just film with the camera below here at my chest, just pull up the LCD screen and look down. Or even sometimes I film like this. And doing that, I can just be really ninja-like at the weddings. People don't even notice I'm there. And I'm able to get those really authentic emotion from the wedding couple and from the guests. And I think for wedding films, that's the best. It's all about emotions. It's all about uh, really getting those genuine reactions rather than just getting these fake poses where people are just laughing like, ha ah, ah, ah. It's much nicer to get the real laugh where people are actually loving life. So yeah, camera-wise, I'm using the GH5 and I'm shooting mostly in 8-bit at 24 frames per second. Uh, sometimes I am doing slow motion, so I'll do 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, Lens-wise, I really like the Sigma 35 1.4. Uh, it's a little bit wider, but at the same time, I'm able to get a great depth of field with the 1.4 or 2 I usually shoot. And because there's not a full-frame camera, you need to shoot a lot higher aperture in order to get that depth of field compared to like a full-frame camera. So probably 90% of the day, I'm shooting with Sigma 35. But then there's those moments in the church, for example, where you just need to have a telephoto lens because there's no way you can just move super close to the bride and groom or get in the way. So here's my workhorse baby. This is the Canon 7200 f2.8, and this is actually version one. So I bought this when I first started filmmaking. Uh, little story behind this lens, I remember when I first got it, I, I was actually almost embarrassed to buy it because I didn't have that many photographer friends or filmmaking friends yet. So when I bought this, this baby, you can imagine my friends' reactions. They're like, that thing's so huge. And so I was almost embarrassed to use it. So the first year I didn't really even take it out, but um, this is just a really solid overall lens. It's like the workhorse lens and you can get really nice bokeh with this and zoom in and zoom out where you need to get into. So for the church part, I really would suggest having some sort of telephoto lens because it's not always possible to get closer. But guys, really, I don't use too many other lenses. Sometimes I use the Canon 1635, which is right now my 60 Mark II, just when you need those really wide, epic shots of landscapes and like that. So basically I'm using the Canon 1635, Sigma 35, and sometimes the Canon 7200. But that's all I use. But even just with the Sigma 35 1.4 and this GH5 camera, I could pretty much shoot 95% of the wedding. So guys, you don't actually need that much gear to shoot weddings. And if there are those moments where I really, really want a long follow shot or just a lot of movement in the films, then I do have my Glidecam 2000. Yes, it's the trusty Glidecam 2000. This is probably the older version as well of the thing. I think Maddie as well uses it. So we have this thing where we really like using these old Glidecams. They're just really easy to balance, really reliable, they don't break, you can trust them on the wedding day. So for weddings, I have liked using this. And my last weapon to the arsenal for wedding filmmaking has been, ta -da! The DJI Mavic Air. I haven't actually in the past really used uh, drones too much in my wedding films. Maybe sometimes if we are doing a destination wedding, we would film the day before with uh, the drone just to get some landscape shots. But now, because of the DJI Mavic Air and just how small it is and how quick it is to set up, you don't have to put the propellers, you don't have to 
take out this huge drone. A lot of times I've actually liked to take just some establishing shots of, for example, the church or the venue, uh, just to set the scene and show where we are. So I really liked that addition to the wedding film arsenal, having the DJI Mavic Air. So really, GH5, DJI Mavic Air, Sigma 35, and the 7200. That's pretty much all the gear I'm using to shoot wedding films. I'm not sure if you guys knew as well though that I do shoot photos. So just as much as I've been a wedding filmmaker, I've been a wedding photographer. I've pretty much been shooting 50-50 weddings all the time, half-time photos and half-time video. And for photography, I'm using the 5D Mark III still. I've really loved the 5D Mark III. And a lot of times I'm using this Canon 50mm 1.4 or then Sigma 35mm 1.4. And as well, for the church moments, I'm using the 7200. So, pretty simple setup again, 5D Mark III. Uh, one thing I've really liked about the 5D Mark III always is that there's this joystick right here. And it's so quick to be able to choose the focus points when I'm shooting photos. And as well, I just really like how reliable and sturdy the 5D Mark III is. It's quick for focusing. Um, yeah, it's just a steady, uh, durable, all-around good camera. And I've loved shooting with the 5D Mark III, all my photos. The reason why I like the 50mm is, well, you can get really nice aperture, shallow depth of field. It's really easy to take portraits because it kind of looks like what your eye would see. So I like that. And then if I need a little bit wider shots for maybe a group shot, I'm using the Sigma 35 1.4. Then of course in the evening when the light starts running out and you're trying to push the camera to the most and you just keep shooting at like 3200, 1.4 and you start noticing it's getting a little bit blurry and a little bit of poor quality, that's the time to bust out the flash. I know a lot of people in the beginning, they're like, I'm not a flash guy, I'm all about natural light. But a lot of times that's just an excuse because you don't know how to use a speed light yet. Canon 580 speed light, really basic, but really great. Uh, the key tip guys for this is always shoot it up. Because if you shoot it up and then bounce it down, the light looks way softer compared to if you're shooting straight at the couple's face, it's gonna look really flat and kinda like the deer cotton headlights. So guys, when you're shooting a wedding and you're shooting photos, don't try to just keep trying to push the camera and do natural light. When you notice that there's just not enough light anymore, I would say after 1600 ISO, put on the flash. Cause the flash will actually look really sharp, really good, especially if you're able to bounce it up from the roof or from some sort of surface to make it more soft. So yeah, 5D Mark III, flash, Sigma 35, 7200, those are the gear that I'm using for photography. So as you can see, I really like to use just really simple setups for photography and filmmaking at weddings because like I said earlier, the less gear, the more comfortable people are gonna be with you, the more quick you're gonna be, the more you're gonna be able to get the right shots that you need. Because I find a lot of times when you're just fumbling with gear, like a tripod or a gimbal or whatever, you can actually sometimes miss the moment because you're so focused on setting up the gear rather than just shooting. So I really like to have just a simple gear set up and be able to just be as fast and ninja-like and run and gun when I'm shooting weddings. Guys, if you actually haven't had a chance yet to check out my wedding photography and filmmaking company, go and explore the website and as well give some love to our Heart Visuals Instagram account. I would love that if you guys could go and follow that. And as well, if you're planning on getting married yourself or you are getting married and you need a wedding photographer or filmmaker, yeah, I can shoot your wedding. So contact me, there's an inquiry form on our website, so just fill that out, I would love to answer any of your questions. Guys, that's all for this week's episode. It was all about gear for weddings. Uh, hopefully this will help you guys get into wedding photography, filmmaking, and just to know what kind of gear you need in order to shoot a whole wedding. Really appreciate that you guys watched this episode, and as well for all your supportive comments on the channel. Love you guys, see you next week.